If a person commits suicide, would that send them to hell? Or more to the point, would a Christian who commits suicide go to hell? Or even better, would a Christian even commit suicide? Well, there are people in the Bible who have wished for death. For example, people like David, who said that, spoke about his soul being cast down and even wanted to die. People like Elijah in 1 Kings 19.4. What about Jonah in 4.8, Jonah 4.8, or Solomon in Ecclesiastes 2.17. Job ruled the day that he was born in Job 3.11. And then we have someone like Paul, who in 2 Corinthians 1.8 says, For we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, of our affliction, which came on us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength, so that we despaired even of life itself. There are times where you can be so overburdened, so overcome with something that you don't think the only option for you left is to live, but instead to die. There are people who have those accounts. We're going to speak to that in just a second. But what about someone who wants to kill himself? Now, the Bible uh, does not give us an account of any person who we knew was a believer who committed suicide. The only accounts of anyone that we know of in the Bible that committed suicide, they were non-believers. However, we couldn't come back and say that they went to hell because of suicide. All we have to go off of is the fact that they were already unbelievers headed to hell. And so they died and went to hell because of their unbelief, not suicide. Now, the reason why some would say that suicide will send you to hell is because you did not repent of that sin. Well, that makes sense because if you commit suicide, you don't have a chance to come back and repent. But what happens or what we see here is a misunderstanding of what it means to repent. Repent is from the word metanoia, and we've talked about this before. And this word does not mean to turn away from doing sin, but it's turn, it means to turn away your mind. Your mind has turned away from sin, meaning that it has a different disposition towards sin. In other words, sin bothers the mind. Your sins, my sins, any sin, that person just does not feel comfortable. That mind does not feel comfortable with sin. But it does not mean that the person does not sin. As a matter of fact, everyone at some point in time sins. And so I want to go over a couple of passages that will help us understand something about a Christian who uh, who was overcome with some sort of guilt, something internally that causes them, as Paul did, to despair of life. Now, we'll talk about the difference between the person who uh, succumbs to this desire and those who overcome it. In John 5, 24, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my words and believes this believing person in him uh, who sent me, that person has life. He has it right now and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death because it's perfect tense. It means this person has already passed from death. Obviously, this is spiritual death into life. And so Jesus is stating that a person who has faith in him, that person has passed from judgment, will not come into judgment, but instead has passed from death and has gone into life, spiritually speaking. And so it should be understood. It should be abundantly clear that a person who has their faith in Christ, that is what saves them, and they are going to be saved forever. Now, Paul goes down a litany of things that can separate, or I should say, cannot separate. He says in verse 38 of Romans chapter 8, he says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things that come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so not death. It, what kind of death? Any sort of death. There's nothing, as Paul goes down the list, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of Christ. Uh, and so therefore, that would have to include suicide. Now, if we take that sin is what causes us to go to hell, and we think that suicide is such an egregious sin that you can't come back from, well, then that would put it in the category also of the unpardonable or unforgivable sin. But Jesus doesn't do so. And so we don't have this listed as an unpardonable or unforgivable sin. What we do have is a person who was struggling internally. And so we could not believe that a person who committed suicide goes to hell because he does not repent, because that's a misunderstanding of what it means to repent. If we believe that repent means to turn away from all sins, then who could be saved since none of us have turned away from all sins? All of us at death are going to have some sins. No one has completely turned away from all of their sins, and at death we will still have some sort of persistent sin. Whatever you die, when you die, 
there might be one sin or two sins or three sins that from time to time you struggle. You don't necessarily indulge in those sins, but you might struggle with it. And maybe, hopefully, prayerfully, that particular sin doesn't show up as often as it did years prior as you were growing, but the sin is still there. And I can promise you, whatever the sin is, it's not a brand new sin. It's not a sin that you never dealt with before. And so this might have been a sin that, hey, it's been around for the last 30 years, 40 years. You have mastered it. It doesn't have master over you, but it still shows up from time to time. And because you died, and let's say you died by something where you didn't have a chance to think about it and to repent. Uh, you died suddenly. Does that mean the person goes to hell? No, because what sends a person to hell? Not believing in Christ, not having faith in Christ. And so it's important for us to understand what sends us to hell and what does not. If a person has believed in Christ, that person will go to heaven, irrespective of how they die. Remember, ultimately, it's the Lord who gives life and takes life. And so one thing that I want to leave us with kind of as a comfort in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, 4, 16, speaking of uh, Paul stating these points, he says, therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond comparison. And now he says our affliction is a light and momentary affliction. Even though there might be the feeling that it's not light and certainly not momentary, do not give in to that feeling. As a matter of fact, going back to Paul at his struggles when he said that they despaired even of life itself, he says, indeed, we have the sentence of death within ourselves so that we could not trust in ourselves. But who do they trust in? In God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great of a peril of death and will deliver us. He on whom we have set our hope and he will yet deliver us. Their hope, their focus wasn't even so much in living on earth, but just simply living in him. And so if someone is struggling, dealing with this, do not give up. Put your focus on him. This is not because you will not go to hell because of suicide doesn't necessarily mean that if you commit suicide that you absolutely were saved. Make sure beyond a shadow of doubt that you are saved and even then fight on, push on. Your affliction, I promise you, is light and momentary and in the end you will have a, a reward. But even more than that, you'll have a testimony to help someone else who was struggling. There are many people on the planet who are struggling with the thought of killing themselves. They are struggling with this suicidal thoughts and so you could be the very person who could help them overcome that. You could be the hero that God uses to bring someone else out. Your testimony of how you brought it out, because no one uh, can tell you what you feel except a person who's gone through it. And so you could be the person that can help someone to overcome this by the grace of God. And so no, a person who commits suicide does not go to hell because he commits suicide, you go to hell because you don't have faith in Christ. So number one, make sure you've got faith in Christ. Make sure you are his. And then two, if you are struggling, seek your brothers, seek your sisters, seek your family, seek God, and then let them be the ones to help you through. I promise you, if you put your focus on that, if you put your focus on him, if you, as Paul says, think on good thoughts, wonderful thoughts, whatever is lovely and of a just report, think on those things. I promise you things will work out. Amen.